Welcome to another edition of On the Inside Track. Have you ever wondered how a person became who they are today? How did they come to certain beliefs? How did they choose a particular path? Who or what influenced the person they are now? Join me, Debbie Hazelton, on the Inside Track as one-on-one my guests and I explore defining moments from there to here on the Inside Track. Gosh, I know that this is, uh, I'm Debbie Hazelton. I know this is going to go, I think it's going to go on the inside track, which is one of the programs that I do. But I also think it, it'll go on um, both, maybe both of our YouTube channels, I think. So I'm um, here with someone that I've just started to get to know, Priscilla, do you pronounce it Lewis? Yes, I guess, Lewis. Um, I, the right pronunciation is actually Levis. 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 Okay, yeah. I like that. Priscilla <laughs> Levis. All right. And, uh, you know, I, I found you on one of Candace's programs last summer, and you often came to mind that it would be nice to get to know you. So I think even in the brief times that we've had a chance to to interact. This is just a wonderful opportunity to get to know more about you and and what you do. So tell us something about what that is, who you are and what you do. Well, firstly, it is amazing to be able to speak to you. It is incredible to be able to connect to other like-minded spiritual individuals who share similar similar things and you can connect and share your stories and insights and how we can help each other mm, but yes. with, re- with regards to me i'm chrisilla lewis um, i do various things so i find that my life has taken me into quantum healing hypnosis which is known as bqh mm-hmm. so i do it's a hypnosis technique and it's a way of exploring the subconscious mind to find healing, to overcome obstacles in your life. And you're a practitioner as well. And mm-hmm. we, we share amazing session stories and learn from each other. But I find that through this journey of learning and discovering, when I speak to people, it's like I can see their potentials and I can see where they're stuck. And it was just a natural unfoldment to start like mentorship programming and um, Mm. try and help them see their potentials because it seems like every time I speak to the people around me, they're like, they walk away feeling motivated and uplifted. And I thought, wow, there must be something to this. I must have a gift in some way that I'm helping to get these people to see, you know, how to achieve more than what they have you know obviously we feel like we are meant to do more than what we are we are Mm -hmm. seeking our purpose many of us are seeking our purpose at this time Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. so that is something else that i do and i also do reading so i'm a medium i thought so yeah and i really enjoy that part of my life as well doing private one-to-one sittings and connect with your energy, connect with your loved ones. And I feel that within itself is just an incredible healing journey. So I guess one thing I'm wondering is if you are a medium, Mm -hmm. when do you, when do you choose? And maybe it's more about what someone else chooses. I don't know, but when do you choose to, bring this to the person versus encourage them to do BQH through the hypnosis. Okay. When it comes to deciding if someone needs a reading or a hypnosis session, I would almost always recommend a hypnosis session, a BQH session, because mm-hmm. through a BQH session, we can explore so much more than what I will only be able to pick up through your energy. 
Mm-hmm. Now, it is beneficial for me to be able to read your energy and your energy and your vibrational frequency at this time, right? But mm-hmm. tomorrow or next week, you may change. You have free mm-hmm. will. So the message may change because Mm -hmm. of your decision-making process or maybe the outcome of a reading. Um, But a reading may be a good thing to have if you want to connect to loved ones and finding that evidence of life Mm -hmm. thereafter. That's that's good, yeah. Yeah. So when you're doing a a quantum BQH session, do you feel that you are equally tuned in to the other side while you are listening to the person? No, I won't say that I am tuned in to a degree that I would be when doing a reading. Mm -hmm. I am using my senses, yes, but I'm more Mm -hmm. using my intuition in a quantum healing hypnosis session. Okay. Okay. So to get my intuition to try and guide me to where I need to be going and taking Mm -hmm. the client. Okay. Okay. Well, that's interesting that even, yeah, to differentiate between intuition versus uh, the mediumship. That's an interesting, I never even, I guess that's, is, do you think of that as a matter of degree or it's very a, different? I think it's a matter of intention. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. But through a quantum healing hypnosis session, you know, the client, if, then, if the, the purpose of the session is not to connect to a loved one, which is possible within a session anyway, but the session is unique and it's a brilliant way to explore because you will be giving yourself the answers mm-hmm. instead of a medium or an external third person. Mm-hmm. Okay, sure, sure, yeah. Fascinating. Fascinating. I find, uh, I find myself thinking a lot about that in a way, I think that to one degree or another, we are in trance of some sort much of the time. What do you think? Does, it, what, does that make sense? Does that Yes, I think, I think it does. You know, if you're either living in the future or the past, if you're not in the present moment, and even if you're in the present moment, your thought is always taking you somewhere. You know, Mm -hmm. um, I think we live in our thoughts sometimes because that's where we tune in. That's where we get our creativity, our ideas. Um, especially if you are very creative and you need that initiative in your daily life, depending on what you do. I do a lot of writing, for example. Mm. So I find that I'm almost always in a state of trance to try and connect to my higher self to get the information through that needs to be put onto paper. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice. That makes sense. Okay. And um, when I first ran across your name, you were speaking about um, I don't know if I'm saying it right, either spiritualists or spiritualism. Yes, spiritualism is, mm-hmm. um, is the religion here in the UK, if you're a spiritualist. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're very much similar. And spiritualists are, I know, it, I know we are formed or called a religion, but it's all about proving the survival hereafter. And we don't necessarily follow any religion. You mm-hmm. know, we are open and welcome all religions as long mm-hmm. as you want to learn how to connect because all of us are natural mediums. So mm-hmm. that's okay. what we yeah. do. We teach that. We teach you how to connect. We teach you the difference between meditation, mediumship, mm-hmm. channeling, and this, it's all just a very um, minor vibrational difference with regards to how you tune into that frequency, depending on what you would like to achieve. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I like that. And so you are still active with that? Yes, I very much enjoy the spiritualist um, movement and churches because... 
you get to see amazing mediums work. You see incredible evidence where a stranger will go onto a platform and will come to you and give you names and dates and information about loved ones that they wouldn't have a clue of who this individual is, but they're getting this information. It's coming from somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. And it's incredible to see. I still sit in awe sometimes as I watch this unfold thinking, you know, what is really, is that, is that just a thought form? It must be, you know, how is this consciousness communicating to mm -hmm. us, but yet we do it. Mm -hmm. And it's incredible. It's like, it's an, this amazing gift that is given to us to be able to communicate in such way. That is, I love it. I, were you always led to this? I mean, did you, how was childhood for you? Did you feel strongly about any of this even way back? Oh, yes. Um, I've, I was always into paranormal things. I used to watch the scariest movies. E.T. <laughs> um, e was my ultimate favorite. I used to wow. watch the, um, is it called a VHS tape? I can't even remember yes. anymore. I, I had, had that too. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I had this VHS tape of E.T. and I watched it until I could no longer watch it anymore. <laughs> You know, you know, it stretches and it gets damaged and then all of a sudden oh, yeah. it's like, yeah. But um, yeah, I used to love E.T. and I used to love everything paranormal so much so that I would scare myself and I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. Um, <laughs> so uh, I've always had that. And I am South African, if you didn't know. So um I moved to the UK when I was 19, and I don't think that I would have ever unfolded the way that I have today if I stayed in South Africa. Hmm. Um, so yeah, everything just exploded when I came over to the UK, and I guess the big awakening at um, 2012, and it all just unfolded there, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Into, into bigger things. It started with paranormal investigating. And I still do that. I really enjoy finding out why there are energies still stuck in locations, you know, and why they don't want to move, move on. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. fascinating. Okay. Wow. So do you actually go to some of the locations or do you do it more uh, remotely? No, I actually do go to um, the locations here in the UK. There are mm -hmm. various famous or old sites, uh, some back to the military, some forts or f uh, fields, uh, bunkers, castles, and you, prisons. The last one I went to was a prison where a lady um, was communicating with us through a yes, no board. And that's a Ouija board. And, oh, yeah. and people are really scared of stuff like that, but it is us that scares mm -hmm. ourselves. If that makes sense, we scare mm -hmm. ourselves and it's all just a form of communication. If mm -hmm. you work with love and light, you know, it's all just a form of communication. And this lady came through and she was saying that she's waiting for her partner. She fell in love with a prison inmate and she was waiting for him because he was too scared to cross over. So, um, yeah, we were able to communicate with her, find out more about her and tell them and reassure them that there was nothing but love and light waiting for them on the other side. There's no hell because I don't believe there is. I just believe there's different vibrational levels of awareness. Mm -hmm. And depending on your soul journey and your soul growth depends on how low or high you will be um, mm -hmm. going when you cross over. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Yeah. Yes, it absolutely does. I, I think, uh, yeah, it really does depend a lot on our choices and our awareness, it seems mm -hmm. to me. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, um, so from the start of communicating and from them crossing over, basically going, leaving the room that we were in, you were able to feel the energy really intensely. You could feel the goosebumps. Mm. And, and once it was like all done, it was as if there was just this complete stillness. Mm. So, yeah. I have heard, uh, I used to be afraid of this, but I've heard people describe source as complete stillness. 
Mm. What do you think? Do you think source is complete stillness or, or silence or, 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 well, perhaps that's reducing it too much? Yes. Um, the only re reason or explanation I can give is probably when you have an out-of-body experience. Mm -hmm. I haven't had a near-death experience, so I can't comment on that. But for example, when I practice out of body experiencing, Debbie, it's mm -hmm. as if you go into, you feel, um, maybe you will get this in hypnosis as well, you know, deep hypnosis states, you know, when you reach those theta mm -hmm. states, you feel this complete heaviness, but at mm. the same time, you feel completely light as if you lift out of your body, right? Okay. Um, and then there will be this moment where you may hear vibrations in your ear, in your inner ear, as mm -hmm. everything is increasing, your body, your energy fields, your, um, everything's increasing as you are raising your energy up and away from your body. And mm -hmm. I guess that is the closest I would be able to describe source and being in that state. That's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. I, I know that, for me, you know, I, I was think, rethinking, someone asked me after I was, I had a session of my own a couple of weeks ago and they said, well, are you in a body or not? And I sort of thought I was, but really wasn't so much that I was aware of being in a body as much as I was experiencing a different state of knowingness. I had different awarenesses of, of, things that were going on, but that may or may not be in a body. But the other things that you describe of the very definite sense of energy changing and, and that sort of sound in, in your ear, that's fascinating. Yeah. Would you have that when you like go put your head under water when you're in the bath or something? Yes. Would you have that as well? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yes, absolutely. That's interesting. Yeah, and it really is a different atmosphere. It's like, it really, I've, even when I, I uh, did Reiki attunements on other people as a Reiki master, I remember saying, wow, this is definitely like, it, it's like a different dimension because it is. It's definitely like, uh, I can remember stepping out of my father's dark room onto this landing as a child and thinking this is another place like this is not not here not there this is definitely another something and it, it it's like a different atmosphere i can understand when you're in this place and you're in that complete stillness how your mind would be able to just travel anywhere mm-hmm mm-hmm Wow. Fascinating. Um, yeah, it sure is. Especially you know, when you connect to the deeper aspects of you to find out or get healing or mm -hmm. find that information. Because if you set an intention, even if it's just through deep meditation and you journeying, taking yourself on a journey, you would get the answers as you would if you did a walking meditation or hypnosis or whatever that may be, if you are able to clear your mind enough and be receptive mm -hmm. and allow to step outside of your body for the information to come in. And it really is that allowing. Mm. I believe that allowing is key to so many things. Are you, I know so many people are focused right now on this, these times that we're in and uh, the new earth and the event and um, changes coming and or that we are in the middle of. Yes. Do you have thoughts on all of that? 
Well, I know there's definitely something going on energetically. I have been mm-hmm. feeling really tired. Mm-hmm. Um, at the same time, my diet has really been changing. I've been drinking a lot more water than I used to. I've been sleeping a lot more than I used to. Um, I'm, I'm not a great sleeper anyway, so I don't get a lot of sleep, but I'm, I've been feeling extremely tired lately as if the energies are just so much that mm-hmm. it's exhausting. So I know that I, looking also at the Schumann resonance, you know, there's mm-hmm. definitely something going on with the planetary energetic field and the solar flares that are coming in and hitting our planet. Mm -hmm. But with regards to the event itself, I feel like we are only going through a a frequency change. That's all that's happening. It's almost as if, you know, 2012, we had an awakening. Mm -hmm. It's like this is now just a different wave that is currently coming in that we are adjusting to. Mm Mm-hmm. That is what I believe this event is. I don't think it's going to be anything big or massive or really noticeable apart from these minor things that we are noticing, like feeling more tired. Um, Mm -hmm. Diets are changing. We find that we are changing slightly and Mm -hmm. it is, it is affecting us like relationships you probably mm-hmm. see a lot of relationships change now. Mm-hmm. Um, you will see lots of careers change. And that's all part of the awakening. So it's another mm-hmm. wave. Come on, let's wake up. Another wave. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I, I um, feel like there are waves that have been coming and uh, that, that there are more energies that have been coming for a while um but you know this this whole thing where people are waiting for an event that's going to come and change everything yeah i'm i think a lot of things are changing anyway but it might not be the way some people have been talking about it um fascinating yes um i think sometimes things are just more difficult to conceptualize Mm -hmm. to think what is really unfolding, what's really happening around us and in our environment. You can see, feel that old structures are falling away. Mm -hmm. I can see, because I see it in my work, that people are seeking a better life and a better purpose. And a purpose of being in service is what I'm finding. So Mm -hmm. we are definitely stepping away from the ego a lot more. And Mm -hmm. wanting to help people realign with their purpose. And I know when we awaken, it's like you just want to fix everyone and you want to help everyone and you just want them to know that there's so much more than this life that they're living. And I think we are just coming through onto the other side now. Yeah. Coming onto the other side of where more people are really wanting to make that difference where people are wanting to serve. Is that what you mean? Yes, I think so. Mm -hmm. Um, Stepping into service more so than I think it's belief systems. It's, it's trying to understand the bigger picture because we fall into this trap of what we believe life is. And then once we've gone through the motions and the steps, we hit a midlife crisis and we're like, well, what's this life about? Well, I think part of what I hear you saying about stepping into the other side of it, I think I also hear you saying that I think for many it does feel that kindness and uh, goodness and helping to relieve suffering are even more important. Yes. Yeah. I'm not really, I'm not always really good with words. So apologies if I'm not getting my message across right. I think what I also really like about that is that when it's heart to heart, I think a lot of people are, sort of leery of when they go to 
get a service or reach out to a practitioner is sort of like, well, okay, I'm going to go to this person and I guess I'm going to pay my money and I'm going to see if I get my service. And I don't know if they'll be able to get me, tune into me, hear me or not. But then when they get the feeling that that heart is there and that someone really does care. Well, I think, I mean, there are studies and I forgot who did them years ago when they looked at what is most important in what makes the difference about whether somebody is really helped or not. Is it the, you know, between different approaches? Well, the one thing that rose up, I think more strongly than any of the approaches was the rapport. So the fact that you connected with that person at the heart level, I just think that's, oh, I think people are very hungry for that. I think so too. I think people are very lonely in the world. Um, I see that more and more, even if they're in relationships. Um, I don't feel like me, their, meets, their needs are being met. Um, and I, I think that loneliness and depression is something that we need to talk about. And I feel very strongly about it more so now than I've ever have done before. <clears throat> because Why do you we, think that is? Why do you think people are more lonely and depressed? Mainly it could be technology. You know, mm -hmm. we, we don't seek to connect anymore or understand the people around us. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Well, and I think in part, if, if, if we're not raised in an environment that where people really are connected and know how to connect and know how to communicate from a feeling level, if we're told not to feel what we feel most of the time and don't be who you are most of the time, then what's, what's really left in terms of, of how to connect? And, and I think many people aren't given those messages don't, because they didn't get them either. That's right. And that is how we lose our way. When you're in school and, and you have a fall, the first thing you do is you go and run for a Band-Aid. But mm -hmm. as an adult, you know, no one teaches you what to do when you have a heartache or you have conflicted mm -hmm. emotions. You just don't mm -hmm. know how to deal with it anymore. So you either, you don't have anyone to talk to, not necessarily, um, because your closest loved ones feel like the fur furthest thing from you. And mm -hmm. um, so we are disconnected. We get fragmented. We lose ourselves. And that's when we get ill. That's when the anxiety and panic attacks start to strike. And um, it's trying to find our way back to ourselves. Yeah, I think that's true. I know many times I've seen people with children when the child is hurt or scared, the first thing the parent does is to try to divert, divert them, get them to, don't think about that. Come on over here where it's fun. Yes. And there may be a time or a place for that. And at the same time, when it's such a way of life, uh, I think there's a, an undercurrent lesson going on in that that may not, like you said, lead someone more toward the heart and toward really feeling their feelings. I was, I was actually just thinking about this this morning that maybe part of what needs to happen is that people need to be encouraged not to just feel good or feel happy, but to feel everything, to feel the range of emotions. Mm -hmm. I knew someone once who, who used to uh, pre present, her name was Raquel Lerner, and she said, she said, most people play, they play their, like they feel their feelings as if it's somebody playing the piano from just the middle of the piano, just, just a, a short little area of keys that go in both directions 
but she said really the more that we heal then it's more it's then more of our feelings are available to us and we don't have to be afraid of them and yeah i think you know maybe that's something that is important in helping others definitely claim all of those feelings and, and yeah i mean yeah i don't know that it that that getting stuck in anywhere is such a great idea but i think it's possible to be aware of feelings and move with them and through them and and be aware of them without denying them and keep on keeping on with them I think that's where divine feminine and masculine is coming in as well. Mm, I like that. Say more yeah. about that. Yeah. So I, as you know, the older generations of men were brought up to not really show their emotions and feelings. And it's as if now the newer generation that's coming in, it's like, it's okay to feel it's okay mm -hmm. to cry. Mm -hmm. And I, I love it when I can see a man really opening up and express himself without this fear of, I need to be a man. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I think at the same time, for me, I don't know about other women or ladies, I think that's nice to be able to connect with someone like that and, and find the balance, not just, well, you need to look after me as, you know, that is a thing of society. Mm -hmm. uh, because we see women rise up now as well and looking after the men. So it's finding that balance between the two and knowing it's okay what, with whatever you're feeling and encouraging to express that freely without fear of judgment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that... I think there's something about that ability to feel and flow with and allow that puts a relationship in a, a different place of heart rather than head. Like you said, those mm -hmm. expectations of society and, you know, well, you're supposed to do this as the, in the male role and you're supposed to do this in the female role and therefore, and now that we're in this kind of relationship, you know, you should know that this is what you're supposed to do mm. for me or I'm supposed to do. And wow. Yeah. Well, even that moving beyond left brain for BQH, beyond quantum healing to work. I mean, I just think it's, it's like, uh, it's a whole different set of rules and options available to us when we can let ourselves move beyond a lot of that left brain and those societal kinds of ideas. Exactly. So that's what we're doing. We are breaking down belief systems right now. That's definitely a key role in all of this. That's what's unfolding um, in, in the coming years, in the now, in the energy that we're in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and at the same time, that doesn't mean that there aren't wonderful beliefs that maybe anyone has had, you know, their whole life that can't be still enjoyed or embraced, maybe, maybe breaking them down and at the same time breaking them down so they can expand. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's understanding why you believe something to be true. Mm -hmm. And then stepping out of that, thinking, why do I believe this? And what else could I rather concentrate on and expand my awareness to what could actually be true? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, um, it's like the yin and yang, the black and white. Is there really blackness or is there really light or is there just nothingness and we're just all connected and we perceive something to be white and black, depending on our viewpoint, uh, the way we look at things. Well, even for a lot of people that would, would want to know, well, you know, 
did Jesus, was Jesus real? Was Jesus really here? And which brand of, of faith is, quote, right? Mm. Yeah, we all could go through similar circumstances and we all could have different viewpoints or perspectives on the same topic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I don't know, I think my, my sense of source is big enough to allow or have room for all of those different perspectives. It's sort of like the mm -hmm. blind men and the elephant that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. I love that. That is so beautifully stated. I love that. And yeah, yeah. that's true. And once you get to that place, you know you're on the right path. Mm -hmm. Because you can be open to listen to all sorts of viewpoints and explore all sorts of avenues and then refine what you feel is right for you or not, depending on where you are on your journey. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when, uh, so do people usually come to you for a while? Do you have people that, that come to you for many different things? What, what, what is that like for you these days? So I have been helping a lot of people within my mentorship program recently mm -hmm. to help them set up their businesses. Um, just listening to them because I have that, um, that ability to just find out where their, their love and interest lies and then, okay, this is what we could do for you and this is how you can make mm -hmm. a success out of your business. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you know, I, I just try and use simple applications that's worked for me and then trying to feed you ideas what could work for you. So mm -hmm. the mentorship programs have been really fun for me. Um, you know, mm -hmm. I've worked with a client recently for five weeks and um, mm -hmm. that, that was really fun and, and I've let her go now. So she needs to step into her own power and really excel. So there's mm -hmm. only so far and so much I can do for every client. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, that's been really, really fun to do. And, and I really enjoy that. And I am doing a bit of traveling. So I'll be traveling to Montreal next month and doing mm. some sessions as I travel. So that great. is exciting as well. Mm, great. Great. So that's great. Already setting up yeah. sessions before you travel. That's very cool. Yeah, I think so. I wouldn't want to um, do anything too short notice. So I'd like to give people advance notice and I'll be speaking at a spiritual center there as well um, on a Sunday. So it's, it's, it's really fabulous. It's really nice that people are um, opening up to, you know, have sessions with me while I travel. It's really nice. Oh, nice. Yeah. And what about you? What is unfolding for you in sessions and, and what's happening with you? Well, I haven't done a lot of sessions this time around. Um, I used to do a lot of hypnosis and, and uh, active counseling. And now I really feel like I want to get, I need to get some insurance just to feel a little more backing because I let my licenses go when I moved here some years ago and I, I've, I'm still been, I, I kept my ordination. I keep, I'm still ordained as a, uh, as a minister of, um, of universal brotherhood. That's where I got mm -hmm. ordained. Mm -hmm. And so I'm still, you know, doing energy work and I'm speaking a lot more. I'm speaking two to three times a month and, um, and I'm teaching um, at a local center, and um, and then I'm doing my radio shows, and um, I'm feeling though like um, I'm wanting to move into even more of the energy work, and I just got a harp, and I've mm -hmm. also been thinking about developing some guided imagery and doing some things that give people more of a sense that it, it can be even easier than they're used to thinking that there's more available than they're used to thinking that uh, it's, it's, it's that ease is accessible. 
And um, so I think there's going to be some other creative projects coming along. Brilliant. Yeah. So, so with regards to talking about <clears throat> people feeling lonely and, um, you know, some of them going through these severe depression stages, you said that you've done some training. Right? I was, I was a mental health counselor yeah. for over 30 years and uh, mm -hmm. then a licensed massage therapist for, for 15. Mm -hmm. But the two things, I mean, yes, I will go into some of the wonderful insights and things that I learned along the way. And there are certainly people that I studied in the field of psychology and counseling along the way. But the two things that I think have been the most brilliant that have really helped me the most in helping others beyond insight and rapport and all that are the Bach flowers and the emotional freedom technique. I think those are incredible. And at the same time, I think they're just the tip of the iceberg because I think vibratory medicine is really where it's at. And I think that both of those approaches speak to that. I think the um, emotional freedom technique is taught in a way that still kind of goes between what someone wants to change and then affirming, you know, that, um, I love myself as I am or all as well or something like that. But there's a woman named Pat Carrington who took it and moved even more into higher choices and claiming, I choose, I choose to let this go. I choose to embrace my wellness. Um, and so, and using it in even more of a spiritual direction. So um, I, I don't know. I'm just, I mean, the, both of those approaches just are very exciting to me. And do you feel like if you have mental health um, concerns that it can be healed? And do you feel it's all just associated with trauma, unhealed trauma? I know that it can be um, passed down through DNA, but do you also feel like it can be healed? I do. Um... I know with both of those, it's believed that the Bach flowers will get to the root and help lift uh, the lift the blocker or whatever it is that's in the way. Uh, with EFT, uh, the thing that that I think helps so much with that is that it helps to get it out of the energy field, out of the body and out of the energy field. And, and then another part of it, I think is to help someone to claim that they really want it to change, that they really want to feel better. And then at the same time, a lot of times people are feeling like, well, yeah, I want it to, but it's impossible. It's not going to happen. So my thing is, are you even slightly willing to allow it mm -hmm. to get better? If you could just embrace being slightly willing rather than feeling like you have to believe it fully or talk yourself into it, are you slightly willing? Well, then I think, you know, the angels work on tiptoe. <laughs> and I think these approaches... Uh, there's a, a little bit of room for them to work. So, yeah, I do think, I mean, there are people that maybe really have a biochemical imbalance and maybe there are people who are in a, in a contract this life to stay in that and not have it lift and work with it. And maybe for other people around them, to grow and learn. So maybe they've agreed to walk that path, to live that, live that way so that other people can learn healthy boundaries and loving kindness and com better communication to help communicate um, choices or you know, any number of things. Um, I, I would not say one size fits all. 
No, no, definitely not. Mm-mm. Well, the, some of the techniques that I've kind of fine tuned with regards to finding out what's happening mm-hmm. is I would normally question and say, what in your life would change if we would heal this today? Mm-hmm. Whatever that may be. Mm-hmm. So there might be like um, an attachment to this illness. It's benefiting me some way. I'm getting something from it, right? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it might be just, unsub- it might be subconscious. They might be unaware of it. As well, um, I find that things sometimes is within our energy field and not within our body. So yes. uh, you would feel, I would, I would ask the client to tune into themselves and, and ask them where would they feel this energy within their body or mm-hmm. is it inside or is it outside and where, you know, is it to relation, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and that's also very interesting. And then I would go and I'll ask them, well, could you put a face or a name or an event to this mm-hmm. feeling, mm-hmm. right? And that also gives you more tell, tell signs with regards to, okay, it must be connected to that person in some way energetically. Mm-hmm. Sure. And that could lend to having a dialogue with it uh, or with that character if it becomes a character, uh, you know, kind of like what Alba Weinman does with the attachments and where they come from and and sure i mean because yeah i mean and that even reminds me of some of the gestalt therapy work that i used to do um that you know let's let gives a voice to uh, a voice to it and um sure and sometimes when someone is able to put a description around it or a form with it, it changes many times it changes and and can even become smaller or uh, or it might become bigger to be identified or more more fully identified. Do you find that? Yes, I think sometimes there's some resistance there as well to mm-hmm. letting go um, mm-hmm. and if you were to visualize or try and you know resolve or pull this energy out you know that there is always sometimes this resistance towards that letting go so yeah maybe it does need to get bigger but I guess it's all about the in the visualization and the intent Mm -hmm. with regards to what needs to happen for it to happen I think your question of how would your life change if we heal this, this, I think that's a great question because that really, that really shows a person's willingness and real desire to, if they want it to heal and, or if they can, um, if they can imagine it life different without it. And, or if, you know, if it's sort of like an old friend that, um, even if they complain about it, they're used to it. Uh, I remember I used to ask people on one of my radio shows, uh, if you knew you had uh, a year to live, you only had one year to live, what would be some important things to do in that year? And one guy kept saying, well, <laughs> well, that's an interesting question, but it's not true. <laughs> And I have no idea what that guy is doing now, but I used to wonder, how do you know? How do you know? And, and uh, I wonder if, if life might have come up behind him and, and, you know, sort of snuck in there and said, oh, hello there. I've, I've got something interesting to show you because he was so sure. I mean, I, I think many of us now are in such a place in our world of knowing that, oh man, anything can happen. (laughs) And sometimes people are not so sure that it's good. I think it can be lots of things (laughs) that can happen. I think we need to be careful what we wish for, right? So um, by just stating that fact, you know, what your client said, 
that is almost saying to the universe, okay, that is what I would like to manifest right now. You know, how would mm -hmm. it feel to have that feeling of whew, some, my life may be taken tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because a year might be a long time. And for some people that get that message and it's a whole lot less, a whole lot less time, uh, you know, where people are told, you know, get your life in order. And sometimes, you know, many times they turn it around and it changes their lives immensely in wonderful ways. But I guess that's, that is one of the big things in my work is to help people realize that good is possible and it can even be that simple good can make a law, a lot of difference that it can be good within our reach in lots of ways. I have a, a fictitious, funny character that I, that I named because my last name is Hazelton. I've been, you know, I've been teased and called witch Hazel. And uh, so, and then I've been teased about the amount of woo woo that I, that I like and, or that I'm into or that I sound like. And so some years ago I came up with the woo woo wacky witch Hazel <laughs> <laughs> and Woo Woo Wacky Witch Hazel to me is a character that, that just is here to remind people that something wonderful is always happening even behind the scenes, even beyond our consciousness, that something wonderful is always possible. And it might come in a very simple way. It might be just a little something that makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think that's incredible. Um, people are afraid to speak about their beliefs, especially with their family and friends. I mm. would have people say to me all the time, oh, what an amazing show I just watched, or thank you so much for that information. And I'm like, please do thank me by sharing it. No, I uh -huh. can't do that. I can't share that. I can't let people know that I'm into this, right? Mm -hmm. So um, you have to get to a place where you can be who you are without fear of judgment. And yeah. I feel that is very important because if you can't be who you are, what are you trying to pretend to be? Yeah. And I have that all the time in my work environment. You know, I when people... Um, make fun of me with regards to what I do. They call me airy fairy or away with the fairies. And you know what I did? I, I went and I created a brand away with the fairies and I wear it proudly and I love it. And it makes I people smile it. when they see it. I love it. What's it called again now? Away with the fairies. Away with the fairies. I love it. That's yeah. great. That's so, great. I embrace it. You know, I love it. And if it means that I can talk about it and plant seeds, you know, mm -hmm. and um, I just look past it because it is who I am. It is what I love. It is my passion. And, you know, I'm not going to let anyone take that away from me or make me feel as if it's not important or it is insignificant. And I don't know if this is true for you, but one of the things that I notice is the more peaceful that I have become mm -hmm. in not in, in embracing who I am and enjoying and having fun with that instead of wondering if someone else is going to give me permission or if someone else is going to disapprove, the, the more peaceful I really am and the less I have people who are criticizing or making fun of anything that I'm into. I guess that is where you will fall away from family and friends and old structures and find the people that you really resonate with. Yeah. And then at the same time, I think my family and I have more, more love and peace between us mm -hmm. than we ever did, even if our beliefs and, and lives are very different. I think there's more love that passes between us now and it's less of a strain. It's, it's more comfortable. Um, and yet, yeah, I think that there is a natural seeking things, seeking their own level. You know, there are probably a lot of people I used to hang around with that I wouldn't now. I just 
would, you know, wish them all the best. I probably don't think of them and they don't think of me as much. You know, we just have all kind of gone our, our way. And so there's, there is that for sure. Yeah. I think we need to acknowledge the people that have crossed our path with regards to the fact of what they've taught us. Um, some people mm-hmm. crosses our path just for a short while and some people more so than others. Uh, some of them leave scars mm-hmm. that will make us fear that next relationship or that fear doing that next best thing uh, for fear of failure. And I think that's where tearing up contracts also plays a role. And I, I love the Ho'oponopono saying, Debbie, I don't know if you've come I across it. Yes. I love it. I would find myself just walking down the street and I would think of all the people who've crossed my path, some of them good, some of them bad. And you know, we all play a part. So it's not always just the other person because you played a part into creating that experience mm-hmm. as well. So I would just sing out loud that I love you, I forgive mm-hmm. you, I love myself, I forgive myself. Yes. And just try and, you know, not being attached to whatever happened. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I think about that a lot. I'm doing that as well a lot. And that's so beautiful. I think um, it's interesting that you, that you say that. Uh, because I, I think there's something... I think a lot of us maybe are feeling more um, aware of and sensitive in that way. And there's such a peace with that, I find, don't you? There is. Yeah. You, mm-hmm. your, your, your attitude, your feeling states, your emotions. I feel everything changes. You don't get angry as quickly. It's mm-hmm. as if there's a bigger understanding of what's going on around you. Well, and sometimes... I will think, wow, I, you know, I wonder, like I might think of somebody that I had a challenge with and I'll think, wow, you know, I feel so different now. I can't imagine being in that with them. And then it'll dawn on me that it might be possible that they have changed as well. That it's not only that I've changed, but they may have changed and they may not have either way, but how, how wonderful to just even have that room of possibility that that can flow in either or both directions. Yes. Quite I, exciting. I know, um, especially meeting new people, you know, it's, it's amazing. I think back uh, now having really close friendships and relationships and thinking back to the very first day I met them and not knowing, you know, what an amazing adventure we would end up having you know, working with like, for example, the Beyond Quantum Healing Team. And oh. I have a dear friend called Emma Louise Living Soul that I met in an in 5D conference. And mm. she was a speaker there. And I just totally fell in love with her. And you know, when you like look up to someone, right? And, um, and, and you just like think they're so special. And you, you soon realize that no one is really, we're all human, you know? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. um, we, we look up to people, but we're all, we're all the same. We're all human. And, and yes. it's, just, it's just blossomed into the most beautiful mm. friendship. That and, is so um, sweet. I know. It, it's, it's lovely. It's amazing. I, I, I love meeting new people now. And I used to be a real introvert. And sometimes I still am when I, I meet new people. But um, once you get me to open up and have a conversation, it, it's amazing where it can lead to and where it can take you. So, I think one, yeah. one of the other things that amazes me is how often the same people show up in, in our lives through other circles. And that's what, you know, is like that, that sort of group, group life, group karma. It's fascinating to see where years later, some of the same people that we meet have lived in some of the same other places that we lived and we might not have known them there, but, or we haven't seen them in a long time and now they, they know other people that we know. And that is just, that is just so, so wild. So cool. (laughs) As well as people just happening or people who happen to come across your path. 
um, mm-hmm. in, in the strangest of ways. And, and they're there and they're helping you or they're making you see different things or acknowledge different things. And you cannot help but wonder that this person must have been sent to you in some universal law kind of way, maybe contracts. I don't mm-hmm. know, but it is incredible how people do just sometimes just show up in your life and just changes everything. Yeah, it's amazing. It's very cool. Very exciting. Wow. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. I know. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like I just had a feast. Like I just ate a big, big meal and I'm full. (laughs) It's great. (laughs) Well, Well, yes. How can people, how can people get a hold of you? Oh, okay. Um, if they want to look at my services, they can find me at chrisillalewis.com. And I guess the best way to find me is to, because I'm a BQH practitioner. So if you search, search like BQH Chrisilla or Chrisilla Lewis, my website will pop up. I guess it's the name. The name is tricky to, to spell, but I'm sure it will be in the description for you. And um, yeah, look at my services. I do BQH, I do mediumship readings and I do private mentorship, healing. Do I do, oh, I do meta, my gosh, I do so much, Debbie. <laughs> just have a look, just have a look. Because I work with, um, I don't know if you've heard of um, Yvette Rose and I do the metaphysical anatomy technique as well, which works with, um, with ailments, um, I kind of incorporated with the BQH with regards to how you feel mm. in within your body, you know, um, and connecting metaphysical elements to finding out mm. what is causing us emotionally okay. and to manifest. So yeah, that is also a very interesting technique um, mm-hmm. compared to BQH. If you feel you have emotional trauma, you need to heal. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Uh, uh, would you spell your name for anyone who's not looking at yes. the description? That'd be great. Of course. It's C H R Y S I double L A Chrysilla. And my last name is spelled L E W I E S. Okay. Very cool. Thank and you. so people can find you through your website or they can go to the uh, quantum. Quantum, mm, quantum healers.com quantum healers.com yeah and uh find you there and anything about the spiritualists if they want to find more about that if they want to find out about spiritualism here in the uk you can go to the spiritual national union mm-hmm. um and i know that you can learn about spiritualism internationally through the mm-hmm. snui Okay. And um, if you are interested in learning about trance and channeling and all things spiritual, we mm-hmm. have an amazing college here called the Arthur Finley College. Hmm. And they do a variety of course courses and they work very closely with the scientific field as well because, you know, it goes hand in hand trying to prove what we do and what science is also saying what we do. Mm -hmm. So um, loads of experiments, loads of meditation. It's almost like a little retreat because you do so much meditation and spiritual work that it's like a modern day Hogwarts. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) It's really incredible. Yeah. If you get the opportunity to come and it's not expensive at all and it will include your accommodation. It will include your meal for the week. And I'm not getting an incentive for advertising. Mm -hmm. It's funny that you say that, that you made that uh, little um, tie-in with Hogwarts, because one of the things I was thinking of the other day about, okay, I was thinking, all right, so hypnosis has gone on before, before and past life regression is not, has not been new really before, but I think one of the cool things about Dolores and Candace and all of us working together is is that now we know that if somebody talks about nine and three quarters we know that it exists or at least we know how to let it exist for them instead of trying to tell them it doesn't 
Yes, I think that we still have to do a lot of educating and speaking about Beyond Quantum Healing because I think there's a lot of people that still don't know quite what it is that we do. So um, please do look at Beyond Quantum Healing because I think Beyond Quantum Healing, yeah, Beyond Quantum is fine, but the healing aspects are so much more than just healing within a session. Um, mm -hmm. And there's so much more you can connect to and explore than just finding that healing. So um, healing could be anything and it could apply to various topics and senses. But um, yeah, BQH is just an inner journey exploration to find the answers from the subconscious mind or your higher self. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it's a great way to explore who you truly are. Yeah. Yeah, and it's interesting. I like that. And it's interesting what you say about healing because, yeah, we talked about that a couple of weeks ago, you and I. Oh, yeah. And I was actually thinking this morning or last night, I was thinking, you know, maybe some good discussions, um, some show or shows talking about healing and wellness, what they are and, and, what you know uh, i think a lot of people assume that healing is cure and it may not it may not be that it doesn't mean it was necessarily ineffective i think that's an amazing topic you know the way yeah. you look at things the way you look at health how you mm -hmm. what is health for you what do mm -hmm. you do to obtain health um mm -hmm. i think yeah that is a topic within itself and that's an amazing yeah. topic to discuss yeah yeah mm -hmm. well I think we have more we can do. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So thank oh. you very much for having me today, Debbie. Well, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. And uh, to your continued success. Thank you. And you as well. Thank Where, you. What is your YouTube channel called, Debbie? It's just, it's Debbie Hazelton. It's by my name. Okay. Debbie Hazelton. Yep. Brilliant. So people can subscribe to your Absolutely. amazing channel as well. Thank you. Yes. And my website is debbiehazelton.com. It needs a major, major update, but it is there. And there's a contact form there. And I am on Twitter and Facebook. And um, so I just, yeah, it's great. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. All right. Well, thank, thank you so much. You.